Okay. Um, happy Friday, guys. Uh, I'm on my way to Tacoma. Hopefully everything's well. Uh, so today, let's review Chapter 5. So Chapter 5 is all about systems of linear equations. Okay. If I get going too fast, just politely ask the substitute to pause things, and I can do that. Or she can do that. Or he can do that. Uh, 1, 21, 22. Okay. Now, systems of linear equations is really like saying, how do two lines intersect? Well, most of the time they intersect in a point, right? I mean, if I have two lines, just watch. Don't, don't do anything, just watch. If I have two lines, right, most of the time they intersect. And where they intersect is our answer. The point they intersect is our answer. So one way you can do this is by graphing. Sometimes they don't intersect, right? Ugh, sometimes they don't intersect. Those are easy, right? Because if they don't intersect, they've got to be parallel. So we know that the answer to that one wouldn't be the point, but it would be the empty set or no solution, right? And sometimes, kind of crazy as it seems, but sometimes two lines can be the same line. They can be the same line. So two lines can actually be the same line. If they're the same line, boy, they intersect everywhere. So their solution would have to be, the solution would have to be, well, where do they intersect? Everywhere. So we'd say all real numbers happens to be the set of answers, a lot of answers. Okay, now. I don't want to graph these. I could, but a lot of times there's easier, faster ways to do it. So I'm going to use either substitution or elimination. Number one, I'm going to use substitution, and I'll show you why. If I can put this negative 2y minus 1 right there for, for my, oops, for my x, my bad, for my x, then everything is in terms of y. So let me show you. So when I do substitution, I like to write them side by side. So my first equation is a 2x minus y equals 3. And I like to do a little squiggly. My second equation is x equals a negative 2y minus 1. So when I do substitution, I just do a substitute. I'm just going to put, instead of writing x over here, I'm going to write what x equals. I'm going to put my negative 2y minus 1 in for x because that's what x equals. So this is a nice little review, hopefully remember. So instead of 2x, I'm not going to write x, but I'm going to write what x is equal to, which is a negative 2y minus 1 minus 1y equals 3. Well, didn't make enough room, but there it is. So instead of writing x, I wrote negative 2y minus 1. I'll simplify. I'll get a negative 4y. Right? Distribute. I'm just going to distribute. Negative 4y minus 2 minus a 1y equals 3. Okay, um, that's a negative 5y minus 2 equals 3. Plus 2 plus 2, right? Plus 2 plus 2, negative 5y equals 5. Divide by negative 5, and I get one answer. I get y equals negative 1. Okay, now it's a point. Let's go back to what I drew, okay? So we're really looking for a point. So every point has an x and a y value. We're not grabbing it. So to get the x value, let's substitute again. So I'll put negative 1 right there in the other equation for what y happens equal. So I'll substitute again. So instead of writing y, I will take y out and replace y with negative 1. So I'll go x equals negative 2. Not y, but what y is equal to negative 1 minus 1. So I took out the y and put one at negative 1 in its place. x equal to a positive 2 minus 1, or x is equal to 2 minus 1, which is 1. Now, again, 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 it is how two lines intersect in a point. So let's write the answer as a point. So I'm write the point as a 1, comma, negative 1. And that is the solution. Easier than graphing it. It really is. Okay, number 2. 
When I look at number two, I've got X is lined up, Y is lined up, equal sign lined up, and the constant. So everything's lined up, the constant's lined up. So I'm going to do this one by elimination. So I want to eliminate. So how about if I eliminate the Y? I want to eliminate the Y by making that a negative 3Y. 3Y, negative 3Y, so I'll multiply this entire equation by negative 3, so I get a negative 3y. Then it will eliminate. Okay, so let me rewrite both equations. So, okay, I'm going to rewrite my 4x plus my 3y equals 14, okay? And now I'm going to change the second equation so it eliminates. So I'll get a negative 6x minus 3y equals negative 9, okay? Multiply everything by that negative 3, everything by that negative 3, okay? So now, if I were to add these two, my y's will eliminate. So, good. Boom, boom, gone. So then I'm going to have a, if I add, I get a negative 2x equals, let's see, what's that? 14 minus, must be a, what's that, a 5? 14 minus 9, is it 5? Okay, divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. X is a negative 2.5. Okay, so that's one answer. Now, I'm going to substitute. It's easier. So I'm going to take this 2.5 and either put it there or there. It does not matter. Equation 2 looks like the easier equation. It does not matter. So I'm going to take my 2x plus y equals 3 and... Instead of writing my x, I'm going to put 2.5 in its place. Okay, so 2, not x, but what x is equal to, negative 2.5 plus y equals 3. And now I'll solve for y. Okay, 2 times negative 2.5, we already know, is going to be negative 5 plus y equals 3. Solve for y plus 5 plus 5 y equals 8. Okay, so I've got my answers, but again, what we're looking for is where the intersect, which is a point. So I write my answer as a point x first, negative 2.5 comma 8. And that is the solution to the system. Okay, how am I doing? Hopefully fine. You can always pause the video if you need to. Okay, number three. Well, um, I'm going to do elimination again. Things are lined up pretty good. Um, let's see. What if I multiply this one by... See the x's? See the x's? What if I make that a negative 4x, 4x? That'll, that'll be nice. Okay, so I multiply this one by a 2. If I multiply the whole equation by 2, I'll get a negative 4x. Positive 4x. It'll eliminate. Okay, so let me rewrite. Let me rewrite equation 1, negative... 4x plus 10y equals negative 42. And then rewrite the second equation, 4x minus 10y equals 42. And then my x's I can eliminate, so I can add straight down, and I can eliminate. Okay, so 4x minus 4x is gone. Oh, wow, the y's are gone. Wow. And the numbers are gone. Everything's gone. So I get this weird thing like 0 equals 0. Well, that only happens if they're the exact same line. And in this case, they are the exact same line. So I'm going to go straight to the fact that they're going to intersect everywhere. So I'm going to say the solution is all real numbers. Okay. How am I doing? Okay, number four. Wait a minute, number four is easy. I know something. If the slopes are the same, they're parallel. I don't have to solve this one at all because I'm smart. So are you. So if they're parallel, one starts at seven, up two over three, up two over three. The other one starts at negative five, up two over three. They're going to be parallel. If they're parallel, there's no solution. Hopefully that seemed easy for you. Okay. All right, five. 
we get a graph. So when we graph inequalities, we're going to shade, okay? I'm going to use a couple of different colors because I like a couple of different colors. Colors are always better for me. So I'm going to shade because it's going to be a whole lot of solutions. And I'm going to shade because there's a whole lot of solutions. So I'm going to get a piece of graph paper out. I don't think I'm going to have room to do it on here, but you know, I'm going to get a piece of graph paper out. I'll put down my x, y axis. So the first line has a y-intercept of 5. I'll do this one in blue so you can see it in blue. Okay, I'll do this in blue. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Y-intercept. Slope of negative 3 over 4, so I'm going to go down. 3 over 4. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. Do it again. Okay. Now, this whole thing about solid or dashed lines, because I need to graph the line, and it does, there's a little equal sign here, so it equals the line, so I'm going to solid line, hopefully you remember that. So it has a little equal sign, it equals the line, so I make the line solid. And then greater than is everything above the line, so I shade everything above the line, okay? Everything, that's a lot of points, so we have to shade, because there's an awful lot of points, okay? Second graph, see, I'll do that one in orange. I'll start at negative 4. Oops, there you go, negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Has a slope of up 2 over 3, up 2 over 3, up 2 over 3, up 2 over 3. Now, it does not equal the line, so it doesn't have an equal sign, so we're going to make it a dashed line. It's going to equal everything below the line, but not the line. So to show it doesn't equal the line, we just make a dashed line, right? And then, less than is everything below. So what we're looking for is the solution of both graphs, of both. So what we're looking for is where both graphs overlap. So the solution of both graphs is in here. I'm just going to make that green. And this is my answer. There's a lot of points. There's so many points that we have to shade the region because there's an infinite amount of answers. So we just shade it, okay? All right, I'm ready to turn the page, and again, if I'm going too fast, just pause the video, okay? All right, I'm ready to turn the page, okay? Okay, is this a solution? Well, that's an x value, that's a y value. If I plug negative 2 in for x and negative 3 in for y, will the answer be greater than or equal to 5? I don't know. Let's check it out. So I'm going to put negative 2 in for x, so a negative of a negative 2, because I'm going to put that right there. Subtract 2 times, uh, put negative 3 in for y, negative 3. Is this going to be greater than or equal to 5? I don't know. Let's check it out. Negative negative 2 is a positive 2. Negative 2 plus a negative 2 times a negative 3 is a positive 6. I get 8 is greater than 5, which is true. So if we were to shade this, this point right here would be in the shaded region. Okay? All right, almost done. Number 7, write a system of linear inequalities to represent this graph. All right, I can do that. So I've got. Equation 1, equation 2. Let's do equation 1 over here. I like y equals mx plus b, because that's the equation of the line. Bakari, right? Please come to the office. Bakari, you right to the office. So equation 1, let's see. Equation 1 has a slope of down 2 over 3. Down 2 over 3, down 2 over 3. So the slope is down 2 over 3x. And equation 1 has a y-intercept at negative 2. Okay, but equation 1 has been shaded below it. So we're going to go y is less than, and it's a solid dot, solid line, less than or equal to a negative 2 thirds x minus 2. Okay, equation 1, got it. 
equation two. Okay, let's start with y equals mx plus b. The slope of equation two seems to be up one over two, up one over two, up one over two. So we're going to go y equals up one over two x, and then it crosses at positive two. Equation two has also been shaded. It's below, which makes it less than. It's below its line, so its y is less than, but not equal to the line, because it dashes. So don't put an equal here. So I basically have it. I like to write them together for my solution. So I'm going to write this as my answer. I like to put them together. y is less than or equal to negative 2 thirds x minus 2, and then y is less than a 1 half x plus 2. And this will create that graph. Okay? So, number eight. You and a friend are selling sweatshirts. The cost of a sweatshirt is x dollars, and the cost of letters on each sweatshirt is y dollars. Your name has 12 letters, total cost of $58, and your friend has nine letters, total cost of 49 Now, let's write an equation. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to write two equations. I'm going to write your, that's you, and then your friend. Okay? Now, one of the things I'm going to assume is we're only going to buy one sweatshirt. So, right? One so X plus, and then, how many you have? 12 letters? you got a long name. So, 12 Y, and your cost is $58. Your friend is going to buy one sweatshirt, right? Just one sweatshirt, okay? Your friend has nine letters in their name, and it's going to cost your friend $49. Okay, so if I want to solve for the cost of a sweatshirt and the cost of one letter, I'm going to solve it. So I'm going to do elimination. I'm going to multiply this equation by negative 1. So I'll rewrite my equations. u x plus 12y equals 58. we will get a negative 1x minus 9y equals negative 49. Cancels. I'll get 3y equals, what's that, 9, I believe, 58 minus 49 is 9. Divide by 3, and so the cost of letters, so letters are $3, okay? Now to get the sweatshirt, I'll just plug it into either one of these. How about right there? I'll plug it into the first one. I'll take my 3, plug it into there, right? Why not? Substitute 3, which is y, in for y. I'll have an x plus 12 times 3 equals 58. I'll have 58. Okay, so put 3 in for y. I'll solve x plus 36 equals 58. Solve minus 36 minus 36 x equals 58 minus 36 is 22. So that's the cost of a sweatshirt. Okay, so I'll be back Monday. You guys have uh, homework to do. Um, please get it done. Don't goof off. Um, you have time in class to get it done.